In this video, we're going to explore using the tree feature, which is found in the Field to Finish program. In this data set, you can see I have five trees located. They are of varying size and description. There's an 18 inch diameter oak, another 18 inch diameter oak, a 24, an 8 inch pine, and a 12 inch pine. I'm going to start by first creating a point group that contains just the trees to make it easier to make edits. To do that, I'm going to go into Points, Group Manager, and create a new group. We'll call that Trees. Instead of including all, I'm going to turn on Point List and hit Drawing Select and just select those five trees. Save. I now have a tree group. As you can see, currently processed through Field to Finish, all the trees have the same symbol and are the same size, and they are just accompanied by a description as an attribute. If we take a look at the field code table by going back into Field to Finish, Edit Codes, and look at the four different tree descriptions, you'll see each one has a separate code, 18, 24, 12, and 8, and a description of whether it's a D for deciduous or P for pine. Following that format, we would need to have a separate code for each tree type and size, resulting in a very large code table that would be time consuming to edit and maintain. Using the tree feature will greatly simplify that effort. So what I'm going to do instead of using these four tree types, I'm actually going to select all four and then just delete them. I am now going to add a new code and I'm going to simplify this to begin with. I'm going to create two types of tree codes to follow suit with this, and that would be a deciduous tree and a coniferous tree. So for the deciduous tree, I am going to create a code called DT, the full code name. In the description, I'm going to leave blank. By doing so, we'll make the description optional which can then be added during the field survey by using a forward slash followed by any desired description. The use of this special code is covered in the basic field to finish course. The main layer, we do have a layer called trees. I'm going to use that for the location. It is a point, and for deciduous trees, I'm going to select a different symbol. I'm going to pick this tree 23 for a deciduous tree. Now the most important thing is under the general tab to change the feature type from a topo to a tree. This allows you to use the tree feature setup. I'm going to repeat that for a coniferous tree by selecting DT and hitting copy and all the other set settings are the same now except for the code. I will call that a CT leave the description blank, the layer is the same. The symbol, however, I'm going to change to this symbol. And again, make sure that the feature type is a tree. So we now have our two tree types. The next step is to set up how we want to control trees. We do that by selecting the tree setup, and a separate dialog box appears with a multitude of options on how you want to handle trees. We're going to explore several different ways of handling these trees, starting with the most simple. The first one is based on the idea that you will locate a tree and designate whether it is a deciduous or coniferous tree, followed by just the trunk size. Enable the option to draw the attribute block. We're not going to use a tree table, so that's left unselected. I'm not going to actually draw that trunk diameter at this time. I am, however, going to scale the tree symbol by a factor of the trunk diameter. With this option selected, the program will scale the tree symbol by a factor of the trunk size. For example, a 12-inch trunk would scale the symbol by a factor of 12, producing the appearance of a 12-foot drip line. Now, if that's too large, and in this case, I think that might be just slightly bigger than I would like. I can add a scale factor to that, so I'm going to make that 0.8. So 
So in that case, a 10 inch tree would have an eight foot drip line, etc. The input values can be controlled to be either diameter or radius. The default, which I'm going to use, is a trunk would be a measured diameter in the field and the drip line value would be radius. So in this first simple example, we are not going to be adding the drip value radius at all. Again, we are going to just simply scale it by a factor of the trunk size. Layers can be controlled. In this case, I'm going to have a dash txt which will follow the layer the main layer that was set in the previous dialog box so it will end up being on tree dash txt the description code dialog box allows you to manually control the order in which you enter the codes in the field if the default order is not desired by entering a value for the trunk drip tag and height you can code trees using any designators you like can also collect attribute information for GIS data. We're not going to be demonstrating that in this video. We are, however, going to take a look at the labels. So here you control the size of the text and the style, font, the text, the location of the label itself. The output value, much like the input value, can be controlled. So you could, in fact, uh, enter in a trunk value in terms of radius and have it output in terms of diameter. What we mostly want to look at is the label description setup. You'll see I have the trunk size set to 1. It's going to be the, labeled in the first order, followed by the comments. Now, the comment is an optional description, which would be entered in the field by utilizing the prefix or suffix options, which are entered after the code using either the forward or backward slash character. For example, a deciduous tree with an 18 inch trunk that happened to be a maple tree would be coded DT space 18 forward slash maple. For the trunk size, since I'm going to be measuring that in terms of inches and I want it displayed that way, has a preset suffix of inches. I will now hit OK and OK. So the coding in this data set was not done in concert with this new setup that we have for the code table. So I'm going to go into Edit the Points, and I'm going to manually edit the coding for the tree size. So here we have an 18-inch diameter oak tree. That would be coded a deciduous tree, DT, space, 18 forward slash oak. The 24 inch tree would be DT space 24 slash oak. The 12 inch pine is a coniferous tree, so that would be coded CT space 12 slash pine. Same with the 8, CT space 8 slash pine. There's one more tree here, it's another 18 inch oak. Can actually just copy that field and paste it so that those two descriptions are the same. Save this, close out, save our code table, exit, and instead of processing the entire data set, I'm going to process point group trees by selecting that and hit OK. You see now that the trees are scaled to different size. The 18 inch tree is visibly smaller than the 24 inch oak. Likewise, the 12 and 8 inch pine. Different blocks and are scaled differently based entirely on just the trunk size. Now, one of the things we're going to want to change with this right away is the fact that the point block itself is on the same layer as the tree symbol. So much like what we did with the edge of pavement line and the building lines, we'll move the point block to its own separate layer. So I will return, field to finish, edit my codes, and the coniferous tree, distinct point layer, set that to our layer, field points. And the same with the deciduous tree. And when I reprocess that, the points are now on a field points layer, so I can refreeze that layer independently. So that's a very simple setup.
So let's go further with that. If you are required to actually measure the diameter of the trunk as well as the radius of the drip line, we would need to code those with both values. Let's try that example. First, go back into Field to Finish and let's take a look at the tree setup. So we're going to change this. Instead of drawing by a factor of the trunk diameter, we're going to draw the tree symbol for the drip line in the radius in scale. Again, the input value is a radius, so our input value would also be a radius. Let's check those layers that we need to add a layer for the drip layer. I'm going to put that on the same layer with the same dash txt. We now need to edit our points. Let's filter our points by using a point group filter and select trees. That makes our code list much easier to look at and edit. So DT space 18, the first 18 represents the trunk size. So it would be coded with another space followed by the drip line radius. So I'm going to say this one is a 20 foot radius. The 24 inch oak has a 30 foot radius. The 12 inch pine say has a 15 foot radius and the eight inch pine has an eight foot radius. And this oak has a little bit larger radius, call it 24. So here's how it would be coded in the field. Deciduous tree space, trunk size space, drip line radius with an optional slash and description of the tree. Save that. OK. Again, save the FLD file. Exit. Our point group is still set and hit OK. You can see now that the, the tree size has been scaled. And you can measure that by inversing 0.12 uh, to a point on the drip line. And there's your 30 foot radius. It is still labeled an 18 inch oak. So if we would like to now add the label of the drip size as well, we can go back in and manage our tree setup, labels, and label description setup. So we will turn on drip size. I'm going to add that in the position of number three on a separate row, prefix, drip equals, and a suffix of feet. I hit OK. OK. Save that. Exit. And reprocess once again. Now if I use my layer manager, I can freeze my field points. Clean up my screen here a bit. So this is now what I have. An 18 inch oak in the drip size. So let's take a look at another option. We'll go back into Field to Finish, Edit Codes, take a look at our tree setup. We do have an option to draw the actual trunk diameter. We can set that and draw a circle or a solid. I'm going to pick solid and it will draw it at the actual trunk diameter, not a scale factor of the trunk diameter. So it is more than just a cosmetic location, it is actually the physical size of the trunk diameter as measured in the field. Similarly, the drip line can be drawn with a typical looking tree line at the measured radius. So I'm going to select that and not bring in the symbol itself at all. Now there is a very unique characteristic to drawing trees when using this option that you will see when I reprocess this data. So the result is a tree line that goes around the farthest extents of the drip line. So you can see it draws the tree line symbol and it trims any areas where they overlap for each other. What you end up with is a trunk drawn at the actual radius, the tree label, and the outermost extents of the tree line. One more option we're going to explore back in tree setup and that is to draw a tree table. 
I turn on draw a tree table and use table entity. I'm now going to take a look at the input values. We can create a tree ID number automatically and this defaults to beginning at point 100 or I can use the point number for the tree ID. I'm going to use that option and then to the label tab. So in the label description setup go through here and make a few changes and the main one is turn on the tag ID. I'm going to set that to the first field. So by doing that and how I want to have this organized in the tree table I'm going to reorganize the other fields. So I think I'd like to have I think I'd like to have the tag ID first followed by the trunk size not on a new row, comments which would be the type of the tree. Finally the drip size also not on a new row. When I hit OK, OK, and process this again. And this time, the program stops and asks me if I would like to create a tree table. I'm going to hit Y for yes, which is also the default. It draws the trees the same way it had previously, and then asks to pick a location for the report table. I'm just going to pick a point off to the side. And a separate dialog box appears, allowing you to manipulate and control what is going to be shown and how it's to be shown in the tree table. As you can see, the fields are in the same order as they were set in the label description tab. I'm going to add a title. I'm just going to call this tree table. I'm going to accept most of the defaults the way they are, but I am going to disable displaying totals. I don't really need to have a total. And then I hit OK and it draws a tree table. To edit that tree table after it's been placed in the drawing I can use the edit table function, edit the table values. I can add or modify values, add and delete columns, and then save the report for future use. What's important to remember is that you can save your tree setups. So different types of surveys may use different ways of handling the trees. So to save the settings, you go back into field of finish in your tree setup and note that you have a load and a save button. So this is our tree table setup and I'm going to save that and call it tree table and it saves a dot T-R-E-E -E file. And then if I have a project that I would like to simplify my trees display, I can load my simple tree setup per se and reprocess the data and I get the trees I had when I started. Likewise, I can reload the tree table setup, reprocess the data, and I once again have my tree table, giving me the freedom to switch back and forth between any types of tree setups that I desire.